Hi guys, welcome back to my back garden and the second lesson on footwork patterns on the Visual Ideas channel. If you can spare a few pennies, remember there's a link in the description where you can con contribute to the NHS. Obviously they're doing a fantastic job doing this difficult time. Today's uh, video is going to be on, as I said, footwork patterns and we're going to be looking instead of wide like we did last week, uh, we're going to be looking at transitioning up the core. I'm not going to be doing a warm-up in this video. You've got some great sessions from Josh and Ollie that include warm-ups. So I'd love you to incorporate a couple of those ideas before beginning this session. The session will include clips from me and embedded in that will be some clips from the pros. Again, they'll do a much better job than me. So good luck with the session. Uh, any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and respond. Transitioning into the net is a really important piece of footwork. Roger Federer was saying quite recently actually that he thinks the reason that some of the younger generation haven't toppled the top yet is because they're not getting to the net quite enough. Now although the game's played mainly at the baseline at the moment, it's still very important that you can move forward either to get all the way to the net or just to step inside the court and play your big forehands and backhands. Today we're going to look at three main ways of moving forward. Having done a little bit of research, the, the variations are huge. There's lots of small differences between different footwork patterns. We're going to try and put them in three clumps, give you some time to practice, and then look at the clips to see how they go. So the first category we're going to talk about is what I'm going to be calling hop and hit. As I said in the introduction, there's going to be lots of variations, and when you watch the pro videos, you'll see lots of slight differences. So we're going to try and bunch a few shots together into this hop and hit category, so that you can practice them and, and have a play with the variations. You might hear other coaches use hop and hit as well to describe one particular thing. As I said, I'm just bunching a few things together today so we can have a practice. Um, this shot, we're going to use the forehand and the backhand side, single and two-handed. The shots are going to tend to be um, above waist height, probably between waist and shoulder, less the low balls. Um, and they're going to be uh, more flat and topspin shots rather than slice. All these shots, as we talked about, are moving forwards. We're going to use a similar um, way of learning as we did last week. We're going to start with less movement and then we're going to progress to some more movement to, so it's a bit more realistic as much as it can be in whatever environment you're working in today. So first up we're going to look at the forehand. We're going to move back a little bit. We're going to just start in a side on position. We're imagining my baseline's back here, my opponent's over there behind you, behind the screen. So I would be in my ready position this way. I'm just going to turn sideways, and the only movement I'm going to do is one step. One step, little side step with my left. That's going to be my momentum forward. I'm going to take that step. After I've done that, I'm prepared to play. From that left, I'm going to hop forwards and land on my left as well. That's going to be. Turn sideways, take a step, hop, and land. Let's do that again. Sideways, I take a small step, hop, and I land there. Now, what we're trying to do is play the shot as we're moving forward. All of these shots, like last week, the pattern is both to play the shot and to aid recovery. So, recovery in this sense isn't necessarily getting back to the middle, our recovery is about moving further forward. So by landing on my left leg, I'm able then to continue moving. Flip it to the backhand side, it's exactly the same. So I'm taking that step side on, I take my right foot forwards, continue the momentum. My balance wasn't great there, hopefully yours can be better. So I turn, right foot, pop onto my right. One more on the single hand, take a step. Two, it's the same thing, turn sideways, I take a step, and I hop. Take my step, land on the same foot. Take my step, land on the same foot. So the moment we're landing on the same foot, I'm just going to bring my little stool in here. What this is going to help you remember is that the um, ball contact's high. So if I don't want to hit my lovely little stool here, I've got to make sure my racket's up nice and high. So now I'm going to move a bit further back. I'm going to take a running step forward. I'm going to start front on. I'm then going to turn. I then 
take my step, I'm going to be hopping over the, over the bench. Let's move it slightly. So starting a bit further back, you guys can do this too. So we're going to turn, there's my left, and I come over the, over the stool. Here we go, turn back here, there's my hop, play over the stool. Ready position, turn, there's the hop, and over it goes. So keep repeating that. The more space you've got, the more you can move. I would come further towards the screen to use my feet. I will do one with, uh, that shows a bit more movement. Backhand side though, I'm taking a step, there's my right, there's my hop. Taking a step, turn onto the hop. With two hands, there's the step, there's the turn, and the hop, still landing on the same leg. Come forwards, there, over we go. So you can use a different height of stool, you can be a uh, ball tube would be lower if you're a bit smaller. Uh, I could probably have a higher chair because I'm actually contact ball up here, but I don't want to risk breaking the stool. If I were to move more, you might not be able to do my feet in this video, but you can add in, next step would be to start running forwards, turn, left, left. Okay, so my feet are probably out of the video there. Let's get the idea. I'm moving forward, the ball's short, I turn, there's my right, right. One more. So moving forwards, up we come, right, right. So, keep practicing those. As I said, there's going to be uh, there's six loops after this section, the hop and hit. Um, and and the, you'll see some of those um, hop and hits where you're landing on the same leg, forehand and backhand. The other thing you'll see, um, and this is becoming more common, is players uh, starting on one foot and hopping and landing on the other foot. Um, you could categorise this slightly differently. I'm going to put it in with the hop and hits for today. It's because players are playing a little bit more open stance. So instead of me turning here and putting weight on my left, putting weight on my left and then hopping, you'll see in some of the clips, players are stepping forward with their right and landing on their left. Here it goes there. So they're moving forward, they're a bit more open stance. You'll see uh, Murray plays quite a few open stance shots. So there, and then he's hopping onto his left. Same with the backhand. Coming across on with that left foot this time and landing on the right. Now I'm not going to speak as much about this one. Um, it, it does uh, cross over with a later category, finally called the crossover. So the main thing I want you to think about in this section is that same foot landing and same foot landing on this side but definitely have a play with just swapping the feet as well. So come in here and landing there. In the clips, the best example on the backhand is Federer doing a return off a second serve. So he spots that Murray's second serve is short, he takes a step forward with his left, and then switches into his right, he's playing that return. So you see Rams, that's a great movement to practice. There, and play. So have a look at the six video clips. See if you can match up what I'm doing with the pros. Uh, hopefully they match up, probably not quite as good. And then give each bit, bit of footwork a practice. The more space you've got, the more dynamic you get. But if you're in a small space, just keep doing those same small movements. So we have Deuce here. Okay guys, the next cast we're going to work on is going to be called the crosses. It's going to involve um, standard crossover steps. When I'm talking about crossover steps, I'm talking about being in a side-on position, 
and one leg going in front of the other leg. So that's the crossover. That will be on both sides, so then crossover on this side as well. And we're also going to be talking about cross behinds, which as you can guess, instead of going over the front, they're going to be steps where you're going to be crossing behind your foot on the, on the forehand and on the backhand, crossing behind. Um, as I said, there's lots of variations to this. You'll see those in the clips. We've got four clips of people crossing over. Some are more dynamic and on the run and even uh, in different directions. Some are gonna be uh, much more transitioning in a straight line like we're gonna practice today. So for this section, it's gonna be a couple of uh, things. Ideally a flat surface. So I haven't got flat surface, so I've um, just put a little mat down here. You're gonna need a ball. Tennis balls are fine. I've got some tennis balls. But if you have got a slightly bigger ball, uh, that might be helpful too. So, give you, give you a moment to go and get those. If you need to go and get some tennis balls or anything, just press pause and then join, join the video back in a second. So when you found your flat surface, what you're gonna be doing, um, you're gonna be lining up really level with your ball. The reason you're gonna be doing that, when we talked about the hop and hit um, uh, category, we are talking about having contact point much higher. Now it wasn't just high, but it was also, in front. So my contact's going to be right out in front because I'm hopping into the ball there. Now as you go lower with a, with a tennis shot, this is any tennis shot, including like volleys, anything like that, the lower you go, the closer and more a level it will come with you. So these shots where we're getting down low, picking up, maybe someone sliced the ball low, we're picking the ball up, we're trying to lift it up over the net and bring it back down again, we're going to be almost in line with the ball. So this is how we're going to practice. We're going to get side on with the ball, racket to be next to the ball. We're going to take a side step. Once we've done our side step, we're going to put racket on the ball, we're going to cross behind and roll the ball along the surface. Working back there. So my racket's down low already. I don't start pushing until I've done my first step, cross behind, keeping the ball moving. Here we go again. Ball's down there. Going to go a step, cross behind. one more of those. Here it goes. Step, cross behind. This works for both sides, so we've gone to the other side. And single handers, you'll find that it's quite a weak, weak position, so you're going to have to get very, very low. If you stand up here, you haven't got the strength, so low and athletic as always. So I take my step, then I cross behind, keeping the ball under control. Take my step, cross behind, ball's under control. Two hands as well, same thing, I've got to be nice and low, otherwise I can't reach. So take my step, cross behind, keep that moving. So we go down low, take a step, cross behind, ready to go. So practicing a few feelings here, feeling of the movement, getting across, but also that feeling of having a ball quite close to my feet, so it's not too far in front there. Right next to me, going across. If you've ever played hockey, you might find it feels like a similar feeling right now. So, when you've done a few of those, if you have got a tennis ball, this would be a great progression now. Let's put the ball on the floor. You'll practice a few, just as we've done, but you'll just be a little bit lower. So you'll take the step, you'll cross, ball under control. Do that one more time. There we go, it's under control. Take the step, cross behind. Ball's getting stuck in the ground, but you get the idea. So what I'm going to do at the end, I'm going to extend my racket. So I'm going to take my step, I'm going to cross over, off my roll, I'm going to let that ball go. Fingers crossed it doesn't hit the camera. I'm sure you guys have got better control and you can aim somewhere accurate. So here we go. I'm going to take my step, cross over. Well, that didn't work, did it? First take, it was brilliant. Let's try again. Here we go. Watch the, the gravel. Take a step, cross behind, and flick. One more of those. Here we go, take my step, cross behind, and flick. Okay, you do that on the backhand side as well. One handed or two, so I'm down there, taking my step, cross behind, and flick. With the two hands, here we go. Take a step, cross behind, and flick. So that's, that's a good practice, to practice being down low and getting used to the contact, but it's a little bit slow, it's not quite dynamic enough. So what we're going to do to increase that, I'm just going to move my mat to the side. We're going to try and go full speed now. We're going to try and start back, we're going to try and move forward, we're going to be a pretend shot now, remembering that the shot 
shot is going to be taking place during the cross behind. We're going to be at the back of the court here. We're going to go forehand first. We're going to move forward. We're going to turn. We're going to play as I'm crossing behind. Now, you'll see me do a couple of different things here, as you'll see the pros. Sometimes I might sidestep, then cross behind. Sometimes I might do two cross behind. So as I turn, there's one there, and then there's another one. Either's fine, it's whatever's natural for you. The main thing is that you're on the move during the play. So if I go backhand, I know that my style is two cross behinds in that move. I find that if I sidestep, I get a bit stuck. The reason we're doing a, the second cross behind, the important one, is if I'm sidestepping, there's not as much movement and my contact's a bit far in front. This allows me to get down low and to pick up the ball in the right place. I stopped on contact there. If I go across this way, so you can see where my contact is, I turn, I go across, as I'm playing, it's almost level with me. If we go on the two hand, we're up to full speed now. Turn, cross behind, and play. Last one. Turn, cross behind, and another one. And there. So again, like earlier, the aim of this is to be in a position where you can recover well. So if I do my cross behind well, I'm on the move, I've landed, I can turn, I can already start either split stepping straight away, or I can continue transitioning forward to the net. So if you look at the clips, you'll see some cross behinds. You'll also see some uh, crossovers. So we'll get the mat out again, just to practice. Don't miss collecting balls, but let's grab a few. So crossover. You might be more comfortable with this if you prefer playing more open stance. We're going to do the same process. We're going to take a step. But this time, as you get the ball, we're just going to go here. And that's all we're going to do to start with. Just take a step. And as you move the ball, you're just going to let that foot come across. Here we go. Take a step. Let it come across. On the other side, the first foot will be the. You'll take a step to the right. The crossover will be the left. Here and across. Now, single handers probably find that quite uncomfortable because you end up in this position okay but you give it a go to experience it you will see it sometimes uh, with the two-handers that might make feel a bit more comfortable because you've got that rotation and one of those if I take a step I cross over now you can go through the same process with the smaller ball and with the flicks what we really want to do is instead of stopping here, I'm going to take the step, I'm going to cross, I'm just going to take two steps because that's what this, this crossover does, it turns it into a little run. So I'm already facing forward, so I stop there, take my step, I cross over, and into a run. So I started that with a few little jog steps. But what you really want to do, you guys practicing at home, you want to turn that into a run and a split step. So I'm in that position, I'm going to take my uh, step, I'm going to cross over, and I'm going to split step. Just one more on the back end side. Remember, this is the crossover, the first one with the cross behind. If you want to practice some more cross behinds, you can add in the split step, absolutely, that would be a good thing to do. I'm going to come here, take a step, cross over, into my split step. This. I can put the small ball down, I can do the flicks, so I can do here, I can take my step, I can cross, flick, I can do that backhand as well. And what we're aiming for is to really feel it at speed. So again, being back here, this is where I'm going to move. I am turning side on, I'm going to cross and get ready to play. More of a rotation to cross over. Again, I'm coming here, there, turn, and I'm in there, ready to go. You can tell I'm much more comfortable with a cross behind. I much prefer playing side on. Um, but giving this the best shot, so we go forward, turn, cross over, ready to go in that split step. So last bit to mention, 
type of shots this is in, before we talk about flat and top spin, this shot, uh, this movement much more allows for slice. Forehand and backhand, I'm coming down here with my cross behind, I'm ready to slice. So down low, slice through. Forehand as well, cross behind, slice. Cross in front, the crossover still works as well. So I can be transitioning forward. It even works with the volley. So one of the clips, I think it's Federer, he plays a volley with the crosses. So coming across, he sneaks in, and he's coming forward, he turns, and there's a cross while he plays. So that's the crossover section. There's a little practice to do with the mat. The most important thing is just to keep practicing the movement, keep the feel of that flow through the ball. Remember it's a low contact. And if you've got space, have a little practice with different kinds of shots, especially the slice. Murray, although it's uh, it's out, box. Be closer still to winning the gold medal. For me, um, less frequently used, not because of it's less effective, but just because it's a, a, a less common situation. So, as you guess, because it's called the open hop, it's going to be using a bit of an open stance position. Now, we're going to talk about two situations this is going to happen. The first one, when uh, your opponent has played the ball wide and short. So, we talked wide last week, and one of the ways we played that was sitting on our right foot, and we landed on our right foot as well. What, what happens though if we're moving forward at the same time? Well, we can use the same pattern. We can be on the move, so I'm going diagonally forward out wide to my forehand. I can plant my right foot like I did before. The difference is, instead of being square, I've taken a diagonal step forward. So I'm ready to play my shot here. Now my challenge is from this foot, is to uh, play the ball, move forward, land on my right again and this is the big thing this is the advantage because i've landed on my right i'm already coming back to the middle uh, or, or where my recovery needs to be if i've played the ball up the line i'll still need to move into court a little bit if i have taken the decision to play the ball cross court and i'm coming to that i'm gonna have to recover super super quick so the practice we're going to do first uh, doesn't need to be out wide but you can simulate it if you want you're going to take a diagonal step forward, almost like a lunge, you're going to be land low, you're going to play, swing, hop forward, land on the same leg. So it's hop forward, land. Okay? Lunge position, diagonally forwards, swing, hop, and land as well. Backhand side, two hands on the racket to start. I'm going to do two hands, it's more common. I'll be on the move, I've taken that lunge forward, diagonal lunge, open stance. Down low, hop, I'm ready to land and I'm ready to recover. Another one on the two-handed that there, lunge diagonal. Imagine I'm moving forward, down low, hop, I can transfer forward. You can do with one hand, um, it's, it's an awkward position. Um, you might see Stan Vavrinka do this, he, he sometimes can rotate enough to play. Okay, but this, with the one hand you'll be stepping, and the difference is you'll kind of across yourself, but you, stand, you can still make enough space to pop and play that way. Again, you've got to make sure you're landing forward. So take my diagonal step, pop forward, and play. So to, to make that a little bit more difficult, you've guessed it, we're going to be, we're going to be on the move. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to give myself a couple of targets, hopefully you can see the ball on the floor there. 
as hopefully you can see, even if you can't see it, you can know that I've sort of all near the front there. So my aim is to get in this diagonal pattern. I'm going to go out wide to my second wall as quick as I can. I'll be moving as fast as I can. And we get towards the ball. There's my right foot up. Push off into my ready position. Got right over the ball there if you couldn't see it. Do a slip on the gravel. Here we go. So I'm there. There's my hop. There's my land. Push. Do one more of those. Really see how fast you can push off the ball. So I'm there. Coming in. Hop. Push. And go. The more space you've got, again, the more dynamic you can be. The less space, just take it slow. Flip my ball over to the other side. Same idea. Back of the court. Good to go wide. There's my left. Land and push. As much speed as you can keep, guys. I don't want to step on the uh, step on the flower, so I'm being a bit careful. I'll try a bit quicker. Here we go. Fast. Left. Left. And go. And then a couple with the one-hander. So it might probably be a bit awkward, but it's definitely possible. So you move forward. There's left. Left. And go. With your recovery, the fewer steps you use, the better. If you've got a, a nice flat surface, you might be able to cover that distance in one step even. Here we go, there. There's my left, left, and go. So, as I said, there's two reasons to do this open hop. That's the first. I practice that a lot. If you've got, uh, if you have got two of you and you've got more space, absolutely get someone to throw you a ball so you can move on to it and play that shot. I haven't got anyone here. I haven't got off the surface that bounces. I could even be doing this on the move. I could have a ball in my hand, move forward, I could hop, hop, and go. So the other situation, and you'll see Murray do this in the clip, is um, a player who just is moving forward but just loves their open stance. So I think Murray does it on his forehand. He's quite central, so he's not from wide, but he likes his open position. He's moved forward, he's in this position to play, and he decides he wants to go forward. So if he was to go here, it's quite a long way and quite awkward to get that left foot forward. That, and it's not quite a cross like we did earlier. So what he does instead, just it's very subtle. He'll get in that position. He loads, moves forward, but it's still that right, right. It's not transitioning wide, it's still forward. But it'd be quite awkward for him to be from there to there because that actually stops me a little bit. It's like a javelin landing in the floor. So his, his solution is to be open stance, open, play. We don't see a clip of the backhand, it's the same idea. Open, forward on that left foot. Open stance, I've done a little step forward, so I'm transitioning forward. High, high contact point for this one. And I'm landing, and I'm going. One-handers, again less so probably more likely to see this kind of position, imagine Roger, but if it, it did come up, it might be there with some rotation, play, and go. So you can guess what the, the, um, the progression is, working to incorporate the recovery. So from that position here, it's going to be uh, taking that open stance, set, step, uh, take a step forward, land, and go. There's not so much movement before this shot, this is more at the back of the court. If you wouldn't so often see someone run forward and then stop, you might do. So if you want to, you can have a couple of steps, get your open stance there, bang, and go. One more on the backhand side. A couple of steps. Step, bang, and go. Again, like I said, if you've got someone to throw you a ball, go for it. If not, try it throwing it yourself. Again, I can't. Uh, let it bounce really, but I can still get the ball up here, throw it in the air, plant, land, and go. Now, I have got a wall here, so I could even try and volley the next one. This could go wrong. Let's give it a go. So, getting down low, getting the ball up in the air, it's going to be a throw, right foot, right foot. Oh, oh, and a little crossover just as well. So, that's the end of the third category, so let's have a little bit of a review. So 
So at the beginning, we talked about how transitioning the net's really important. That's whether you want to go and actually do a volley like I just did, or just that you need to step inside the court to play a big ground stroke. We took three categories. We took hop and hit, which we included hopping onto the same foot on both sides. And we also talked about, which crosses with the crossover a little bit, but we talked about hopping and landing on a different foot. So where I'm getting side on, right foot to left foot. And on this side, left foot to right foot. We then talked about the crosses. We talked about that being a low ball. Uh, we talked about making sure we know how to do cross behind, but also making sure we knew how to do cross over. Both sides, nice and low. And we also said that's a great move for the slice. And as I showed you right at the end by accident for the volley as well. Last one we talked about was the open hop, whether it was out wide to recover or whether it was just one of those big beastie open stance shots when we're there and moving forward. So take a look at the clips, um, keep, keep, keep going over them and keep practicing the footwork as much as you can. It doesn't matter if you've got a big space or a small space, you can do lots of work and this is good for your fitness too. I've got a little bit of a sweat on and just doing lots of movements like this are going to be good for my, good, good for my muscles, good for my tennis. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please do check out the link below for the NHS. Um, we'll hopefully see you all soon back at many tennis courts around Oxfordshire. Um, uh, stay safe, stay home.